right, well, my bracket is mourning Kentucky's loss, but Ross and Brian are here to break down who actually did make it to the Final Four. Thanks, guys. Well, it all comes down to this. The Final Four is set, and it's almost time to crown a national champion. Now, these aren't your typical college basketball powerhouses, as South Carolina and Gonzaga are both making their first ever Final Four appearance, while Oregon is back for the first time since 1939. North Carolina, however, is in very familiar territory. This will be the program's 21st time in the Final Four, and they're looking to take their seventh national championship home to Chapel Hill. South Carolina battles Gonzaga at 6, and North Carolina and Oregon tip off at 9 on Saturday night. So, Ross, who do you think advances to the national championship and comes out on top? Well, I really do think it comes down to a few things. Size, shooting, and experience. Mm -hmm. First up, looking at my, one of my picks to be in the national championship game, South Carolina. Now, their coach, Frank Martin, has done a phenomenal job bringing this young ragtag group of players here to the Final Four, and I think that they're going to make their appearance in the national championship game. Their star player, Thornwell, the 6'5 senior, was putting up 21 points per game, SEC player of the year this year, and he has dominated the offensive end of the floor. But that's where their weakness actually falls in. Diversity in scoring, their next highest scoring player is only putting up just about 10 points per game. They're going to need to produce a lot more all around the uh other than Thornwell, if they want to have any hopes of beating North Carolina. Now, looking at the Tar Heels now, Coach Roy Williams, already a two-time national champion, and they have so much more experience. Let's not forget, they were about two seconds away from taking home the national championship last, last year. Lots of their important key players in the roster this year remember that loss. It's fresh in the mind, and they've learned from that experience. They've grown from it. So I've got North Carolina coming out on top of South Carolina, bringing home the championship to Chapel Hill. Who do you have for your pick? Well, I am going to go uh, in the opposite direction. I think South Carolina has this one. I really do. I really like their team. I love their defense. I love Cinderius Thornwell, SEC Player of the Year. Uh, I'm not going to go against South Carolina. They beat Duke. I think they're the Cinderella story of this tournament. And, I mean, look, that's the easiest bracket we've had to fill out all year. So let's hope we got it right this time. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Well, switching gears now to baseball, Boston has been buzzing the last few days, and that's because the Boston Red Sox are less than a week away from opening day at Fenway Park. It was a long winter, but the Red Sox are sure to make up for it as they boast one of the strongest teams in the American League. Coupling the offseason pickup of left-handed ace Chris Sale with David Price and Rick Porcello, Boston's rotation looks as dominant as ever. So tell me, Brian, do you really think the Red Sox have what it takes to go all the way this year? Well, listen, I think they definitely do. You know, this Red Sox team uh, obviously is, is is one of the stronger teams in the league, as we've said. And I do think, though, there are some question marks. Primarily, this is their first season without David Ortiz in over a decade. I think his absence is going to loom large, could loom large. Um, the Red Sox are trying to replace his production with the likes of Pablo Sandoval and rookie uh, Andrew Benintendi, who is a fantastic player. But again, this is his rookie season. It's hard to rely on a guy that young. Um, their starting rotation, David Price, is currently on the disabled list, won't start the season with the Red Sox, so we'll have to see if he rebounds and, and gets healthy and can pitch well. And then when they get to the playoffs, that's a concern. David Price, Rick Porcello both have had shaky postseasons. Chris Sale has never made it there while, since he was with the White Sox. So it'll be interesting to see how they fare in October. I do think they'll win the AL East for sure. Um, but when it comes to playoffs, the World Series isn't a guarantee this year. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the World Series, Brian, who would you say is your pick for a World Series matchup this October? Well, I'm not going to give the pennant to the Red Sox. Not quite, not quite yet. They really? have to prove it to me. I'm going to go with the Houston Astros. I love their offseason moves, coupling Carlos Beltran with Carlos Correa, Jose Altuve. This is a strong lineup, a great pitching staff if Dallas Keuchel recovers. I think they'll match up against the Los Angeles Dodgers. It's about time they finally win a pennant after making the playoffs so many seasons uh, prior. Absolutely. Well, I am going to stick with the hometown team. I've got the Boston Red Sox going into the World Series, also against the LA Dodgers. And I just think the Red Sox have had the best offseason of any team in the MLB. Their starting rotation is going to be untouchable. You pointed out the issues they've had in the playoffs, but I think this is the year they're going to be able to grow past those issues and really make a run at their fourth uh, World Series this century. Well, regardless of our predictions, we have a long way to go to reach October. The Red Sox open their season on Monday at 2.05 p.m. against the Pittsburgh Pirates. That's all the time we have for sports. Let's send it back to Moses and Claire. Hi, I'm Mary Malloy, your film correspondent from Good Morning Emerson. I hope you liked what you saw. If you did, click the link on the left to watch a clip from this past episode or click the link on the right to watch a clip from this past season. Thank you so much for watching.